conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this is the one who judges the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Sister Barbara, if you will come now.
and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Verse 3, Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked them to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Verse 5, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, I like this part right here, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Verse 7, so they signal to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Verse 9, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their nest to land, they forsook all and followed him. And we pray. Lord, we thank you for this word that you're about to give to your people. I ask right now, Lord, that you decrease me and you increase through me. We bless your name. We give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen. You may be seated. If I were to give the title of this message a label, I would call it Going Deep for Jesus. Amen. Going Deep. For Jesus. I remember growing up, there was a TV series called Star Trek. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I'm going to give your age to remember that. Yeah. And I remember the intro was Star Trek. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. To explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life and new civilizations to boldly go. <laughs> Say that again, to boldly go where no man has gone before. I remember having the daunting task of teaching both our, our kids how to drive. It started in the driveway, and you know in the driveway you teach them the buttons, you teach them the brakes, and what have you. 
Then it went on to the neighborhood streets. Once they got a good feel for that, we went on over to the area with lots of parking and room to practice. Between riding around the neighborhood in familiar areas, both kids just about had mastered that. However, once I told them it was time to get on to I-75, they got a little bit hesitant. There was a lot of tension, uneasiness from both of them. Again, they had just about mastered riding around in the neighborhood and the empty parking lots. But when it was time to go outside of their comfort zone, into traffic and longer distances of travel, there was an initial hesitation. But both of them knew in order to get to the places that they haven't been before or to venture into new territory and new opportunities, they had to go beyond their comfort zone. Is there anybody here this morning who knows that Jesus would not allow his church to be comfortable with being comfortable? If his desire and mission is for us to grow spiritually and to save souls, but if you are where Christ is calling you to be, church, and you are doing what he called you to do, church, he will bring you through. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me provide some context here. The story here parallels the calling of the four, the first four disciples. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. It, to be Jesus' disciples. These were men who were already acquainted with him and had been previous disciples of John the Baptist. They had probably accompanied Jesus back to Galilee, but he had not at that stage called them to follow him. You following me? What is fascinating here is of the four synoptic gospels of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, only Luke tells us about the remarkable incident about the fishes. The setting of this passage of scripture takes place in Gennesaret, where Jesus was preaching to the crowd. He was also recruiting his first four disciples. Some of these disciples were amongst the fishermen cleaning their fishing nets after an unsuccessful catch. Here's what we also find in the text. One of the boats were Simon Peter's. Peter must have felt privileged that Jesus wanted to teach from his boat. We can also be sure that Simon Peter listened to the teaching all the more attentively. Just some additional background of the setting here. Jesus had just healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law the night before, actually. So there was already a calling brewing inside of Peter leading into the next encounter with Jesus. We see in verses 4 and 5, Peter receives as Jesus directs his service. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, watch this, lunch out into the deep. Lunch out into the deep. Peter could not give something to Jesus without Jesus giving even more back to him. As far as we can tell, Jesus was in the boat with them as he directed this, his presence gained confidence. It is a blessing thing, blessed thing that Christ is sitting in the boat while you are casting out the nets. I can imagine Simon Peter getting his mojo on while Jesus was giving his approval of his obedience. Master, we have toiled all night. The particular ancient Greek word Luke used for master which is the pistasta, is unique to Luke's gospel. The word has the ideas of commander, master, or even boss. With this title, Peter showed the beginning to show willingness to trust Jesus. However, there was some reservation here. Again, in verse 5, Peter says, We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Peter could have come up with any number of possible excuses. Please understand, these men were professional career fishermen. I can only imagine what was going on through their minds. Is this man who came out of nowhere telling me how to fish? 
I worked all night. I'm tired. I made a career off of doing this. I know a lot more about fishing than this carpenter does. Or they might have thought the best fishing is at night, not in the daytime. What is he talking about? This man Jesus, they probably thought, made no religion, but he can't possibly tell me about fishing, right? But when you hear Jesus speak, all you know is there is power in his words. Simon Peter comes to his spiritual senses and says, he says it in verse 5, at your word, I will let down the net. This was Peter's great statement of faith and trust in Jesus' word. God's people throughout all ages have lived and gone forth with this confidence in the word of Jesus. People of God, past and present, know the power of the word of Jesus. At your word, let there be light. At your word, you created the heavens and the earth. At your word, the creation is held together and sustained. At your word, empires rise and fall. History unfolds your great plan. At your word, you healed my body. Make it personal. At your word, you made a way out of no way. At your word, you've been my rock. At your word, you've been my battle axe. At your word, you've been my rose of sharing. At your word, you have caused my enemies to sit at the table when you bless me. I am reminded of a psalmist who wrote, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I ask you this morning, has anybody had an at your word kind of testimony with the master of the sea? In order to willingly launch into the deep, we ought to keep three things in mind. We must first embrace change. Embrace change. Fishermen in this text were willing to try something else. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Uh -huh. Wasn't working anymore. Yeah, yeah. Number two, boldly accept challenges. Yeah. Metropolitan, y'all know about that. Yeah. Boldly accept challenges. Yeah. We may not understand immediately what God has in store, uh -huh. but as the songwriter says, we will understand it by and by. Yeah. 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 And number three, Make Jesus-centered choices. Make Jesus-centered choices. Is this my will or yours, Jesus? That is the question we must constantly ask ourselves. Amen? Amen. As I begin to close, there are some thoughts I would like to leave you with. Something to contemplate throughout the rest of this week. Jesus chooses imperfect people to do work for his perfect plan. He is calling boldly to go where there, where those who do not accept him have gone before. How often do we resist Jesus' claim on our lives because what he is calling us to do seems crazy? Too impractical. Doesn't make sense. How often do we avoid putting out into the deep, to the deep waters of following the calling that Jesus gives us? Christ calls us out of our comfort zone. He invites us to lunch out into the deep. The storm may be raging in this season. Trials and tribulations on every side. But you and I, we are in Christ. He has called us to be the church. And you are doing what he called you to do, church. He will bring you through. Jesus' mission does not wait until we think we are ready. Did you hear that? Jesus' mission does not wait till we think we're ready. The need for the gospel in this broken world is far too urgent. We are called right now. Even in spite of our, our frail humanness, our failures, our doubts, even in the midst of our ordinary, our complicated lives, Jesus 
word to Simon Peter. It's also a word to us. Do not be afraid. This is Jesus' mission. And we trust that he will keep working with us and through us, individually and collectively as his church. Catching others as he first caught us. In the deep, with a wide net full of his grace, his mercy, and his love. We trust finally that the catch is in God's hands. And that God's desire is for the nets to be bursting and the boats full. All we need is to be sure that Jesus is in the boat with us. Uh -huh. Metropolitan, I ask you, is Jesus in the boat with you? Okay. Well, I'm about to give you all a test this morning. There are two kinds of boats. Follow me. There are two kinds of boats. One is a cruise. Y'all want to ask me what a cruise is? In a cruise, you want to hear your favorite song. Cruise, you want the pastor to preach what you want him to preach. A cruise is you have to have air conditioning. A cruise is you're just too comfortable. And if anybody do something or say something that's out of whack to what you want, you're not comfortable anymore. That's the cruise. Where you're being served. That's the cruise. Or are you on a battleship? <laughs> in the battleship, in the battleship, we're fighting for the Lord. In the battleship, there's trials and tribulations. But we know that at your word, he's going to bring us through. In the battleship, the preacher going to make you say ouch. But it's okay because you know that that ouch needs to be addressed. In a battleship, you're helping one another. In a battleship, it doesn't matter who comes through these church walls. Everybody needs saving. In a battleship, it's called a hospital where people can come and get well. In a battleship, it's a fuel station where after a whole week of loving on people, you get filled up. It's a hospital, a fuel station, and also in the battleship is a training station. So who are you, Metropolitan? Are you the cruise? Or are you in a battleship? I want you to I want you to think about that this week. Am I a cruise or am I a battleship? Don't think just over these past few months. That's that's it. There's gonna be other trials. There's gonna be other tribulations. There's some folks out there that think y'all are not gonna last. But at your word. Come on, repeat after me. At your word. At your word. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess at just a simple name. Of Jesus. Yes. All you have to do is keep Jesus in your boat. Yes. Keep Jesus in your yes. battleship. Yes. Let the church say amen. 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 But it's clear to us that if we're not on the battleship, we need to be on And the words of our Great young minister has reminded us that it ain't a cruise. It is not a cruise. Battle to be done, and we are fit for the fight. God on our side. We offer Christ to you.
Whatever you have to do to keep the battle shoot going. Oh, yes. We ask that you allow this message and this messenger to reach the places in your heart that needed dust and all. Sometimes we get a little complacent. We don't really know what's going on. But as you go through this next week and you ask yourself the question, am I doing battle, battleship things or cruise? <laughs> Gracious Father, we pray for your holy church, the community, the nation, and our world. Fill them with all truth, and all truth with peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is an error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, Strengthen it. Where there is want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunited. We give thanks, O Lord, for all the many ways in which you have blessed us. For the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son and Savior. Amen. Amen. I'd like to offer a couple of bits of information regarding our members of our congregation. Annie Sanders, I'm not sure she's home yet, but I talked to her and her daughter yesterday. She's had surgery, she's in Redmond, she's doing fine, she's in good spirits. She had to amputate one of her toes, but she's in good spirits. And I got that message to her, and she asked me uh, to give her, give us thanks for her, passing the blessings on to her, to keep her in the prayer. On a personal note, I got a a note the other day from a three-star general. And I got another note from a two-star general. And he told me that my daughter, Solani, had been selected for Lieutenant Colonel promotion. I cannot believe that that little person I used to drag around here all the time. is now going to be sometime in the next few months Lieutenant Colonel. Keep her in your prayers. She just left Hawaii and she's in Korea for a 13 month tour. Who knows after that? She's been all over the world, but I can say honestly that she's always kept the Lord with her. She's asked about Metropolitan, she asked about the folks in the congregation, and she asked me to pray that for her. I don't know what it is that I can say about our message this morning, other than what I've already said. But you know, we come to a worship service expecting something. We expect to be filled with the Holy Spirit and the idea of worship beyond what we do. And I told you the other day that life does not have a remote control. You gotta get up and turn it. You gotta get up and turn it. As our messenger said this morning, you gotta go deep. Fishing on the service, you might not know what you get. You not get anything. You go deep. So I ask that you provide your blessings and prayers continue for the success of this young man. He'll be back with us next week. And we're looking forward to your meeting with us. Amen. All your friends, tell them you had a great message this morning. Amen. Uh, John Ware didn't have to preach. So they don't have to stay on because I'm preaching. But if all minds are clear, any other announcements we need to make this morning? You know, I now ask that you stand and that our ministry give us the benediction. Lord, we thank you for this time of gathering. We thank you for this word, Lord, that you gave us today, Lord, that we have to get out of our comfort zone, Lord, and go into the deep. Lord, we trust you at your word. That as we go into the deep, we're not going alone. That you'll be in the boat with us, Lord. Now to him who is able to keep
keep you from falling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. Now go in peace. <laughs>